left school with no real direction. I guess a lot of people do that. Um, straight into a job in the building trade. I was labouring at the Tower of London, carrying concrete blocks from shoulder around it, and I loved it. Really good time. But I remember one winter, standing outside at the concrete, where we did the mixing for the, the cement. Um, us topping the water butt, thinking there's got to be more than this for me because I, I needed to pick a trade, I needed to pick some. So I started to look. Um, and at the time I was doing a sitting gills in motor mechanics at college as well in the evenings because I wanted to head that way. Uh, so I kind of put the feelers out a little and I went for a job at Fords. Um, and another one came up for a small hydraulics company that did forklifts and hoses in Basildon. Um, and I took it over the full job at the time. It looked the more appealing, there was more variety in what they offered. GSL that they called. I stayed there for a year and a half, um, took a phone call at work one day from a competitive company that we sometimes dealt with that told us that Pertec were coming to Basel and we're going to open a tray counter up down here. I'd never really heard them before, didn't really know the services they offered, it was all quite new, but it pricked my ears. Um, there's a, a unit not far from here where as Whilst working for GSO, I used to go there to get some of our consumer balls and I drove past here one day to pick some parts up and I saw my first Pertec van outside, the white and blue one, um, and decided I'd drop in that evening and see what I could find out. And I, I came up on my way home from work, a quick detour, um, and they were just setting up, counter was going in, the, the blue and yellow flashes everywhere, the stock shelves were being built and the electrician was in putting the lights up on the top of the building. And the guy that owned the Pertec Basel, and then there was two in fact, a chap called Vic Lane was here, um, and I introduced myself, told him what I did, um, and said if he was interested in someone to work on the trade counter at Basel, then, then I'd be interested to talk to him. And he rang me that evening in fact, and offered me the job and I took it. 1st of May, 1995, started as a trade counter assistant, I've never really looked back. Fortunately, because I'd had experience, I knew the hose, I knew the fittings, um, I had to prove that on the first day, but that didn't prove too much of a challenge, so it was a little bit of experience. So it was looking after the new customers were coming over the trade counter, um, mopping the floor, keeping the place clean and presentable. Um, we were still setting up, it was kind of day one when I'd walked in, so there was parts to be put in boxes, and. I had to learn the part number systems for Pertec at the time. And the products, although I was familiar with them, they were all slightly different or there'd be subtle changes. So it was Trey Counter customer taking the I remember my very first phone call. It was a guy called Richard, worked for one of our big key customers even today. Yeah, I'm obviously learned about Pertec and the, the Pertec business model and um, or my role as a, as a depot assistant. The next step from the depot assistant here was to become an MST and get out on the road and start you know, going out and serving the customers, but in a different way. It represented to me more money. It was the next step and more money, the next financial step in my life as well. Um, we had gone from, we started here with one van, progressed to three um, eventually, but I think I filled uh, van three when it, it was first put out. They, they were good enough to give that job to me, so I took it. Certainly coming through the ranks like that did me no harm. Um, I know. I mean, even now, I'm quite involved, um, but I'll jump in a van. You know, if, if we need to, we have a spare van here. My centre manager and I will both jump in that van if it's necessary. Vic needed more help in here. We had a depot lad here then that had replaced me. So as I'd gone out, he'd got a new depot lad in. But as we were getting bigger, his responsibilities were getting greater. Um, and Vic's time was becoming more difficult or less available and he's got two other centres to run as well so he, I guess he made the decision to, to put a centre manager in to, to help this place tick along and take on some responsibility so he could give more time directly to his customers or directly to his other centres. Um, so he made me aware that he was looking to take a centre manager on. Next step. I'm not going to say no. Um, so I, I asked and we had a good chat about it and he welcomed me back in to come and run it for him. And I, I think I was, at the time I was the, I think, one of if not the youngest centre manager that we had in Pertec in the UK. So yeah, it was a big step for me. Big learning curve. Yeah, I never set out to own my own business. No, it was never a consideration. I always wanted to work and to work well. So whatever I did, I, I, I'd say now that even if it was my job to clean the toilets in a pub, I'd, they'd be damn clean. You know, my drive would be to do it as best as I could. And I don't really, it's not so I can be better than the next, it's so I can be as, do the best for me. 
Um, so yeah, the, I think 10 years I was running his centre for him. Um, in that time, he'd sold his other two, so both Leighton and Harlow, and importantly, Harlow had gone to a fellow centre manager to, to prove it could be done, and Pertec helped make that possible. So these guys have come in either at Depot assistant level or at MST level and just work their way out with a little drive, a little luck, um, a lot of hard work. Um, so this the other chap had done it. Yeah, when that, when that was offered as a, a possibility, I didn't believe it. I thought, yeah, I don't know quite how I'm going to manage that, but okay, let's see how this pans out. So a few interviews later with Pertec UK, a um, few meetings with a bank manager, a business plan, again, with the help of Steve Martin at Pertec UK. Um, yeah, and we got there. It took some effort, it took a few years, a bit of time, uh, a little bit of training, and I had to start learning all over again. I'm, like I say, I never set out to run my own business, but Pertex given me the opportunity to do that. Um, but obviously I speak and deal with fellow franchisees as well, and yeah, it's, it's been really good to me, and it's good to the guys I've got working here as well. But I'm a, a big part of a small business, that's a small part of a much bigger business, and that's a, a, a nice place to be. You have to be focused, um, you have to know your market, you have to know what your customer wants, you have to know your guys, your ladies, you know, your team that you've got. Because without these guys behind me making this place work, we wouldn't be where we are today, we wouldn't have what we've got today, you know. So it's all about the team I've got here as well. Um, but the wider network is there for support, um, the wider network is there to guide. Um, but I've used in phone calls advice from franchisees that have been doing this and made a success of it a lot longer than I have. So they are there to, to lean on and to offer support and Pertec UK as well. It's not a business partner, it's a partner in business. So our success as franchisees, if you like, their success relies on us being successful as well. Um, so I, I just take the positives from that. You know, they are the... the <laughs> I run a small business in Basildon, but my name's splashed all over a touring car that goes throughout the UK and gets mass airtime on ITV. So the the brand itself is huge, far bigger than I am, far bigger than we are, but we're a part of it. And so, it, yeah, that, that I'd seen nothing but positives in being part of a franchise and a group like that. Health and safety. We are in a completely different world to the one that I first started in. But I'm not saying it wasn't safe, it was safe. Um, I'm still here, it must have been safe. But the, the regulation, I, I wholeheartedly support it, and it is right that these guys should work in this way. Um, but yeah, big changes, big changes. To me, we need to represent the best value for our customer. Not cheap, not because anybody can buy cheap. There's the internet, so there's nothing you can't get your hands on it, just this, how long it takes you to do it. It's about value, it's about what you get for your pound, what you get for your 10 pound. When you pick up that phone and, uh, and call us or a competitor, I wanna make sure that when you call us, you know what you're getting and it's that high end, top notch, quality, reliable, professional, safe, trained, perfect service. That's what it means to me. That's what that brand means to me. It's lead by example. Yeah, that's all I've done, is led by example. I would never ask them to do something I wouldn't be prepared to do myself. And if I walk outside my door now and there's something on the floor in front of me, I'll pick it up and put it away. And I expect them to do the same as well. But it's not hard to buy into a brand like this because it looks good, because it, it we appear through a lot of hard work to be professional. So be professional. Don't, don't deceive yourself, certainly don't deceive your customers. Your van's look smart, look presentable, you look smart, you look presentable. Your customer expects a certain level of service and approach when they ring you, so just make sure you deliver on it. You've just gotta care, you've just gotta care. So when someone rings up and the machine's broken down and whatever's going wrong, however much is costing them, they're under an unknown amount of pressure, you've gotta care. You've gotta to wanna to get your technician out as quick as you can. You've gotta give them accurate information, so if you are gonna be delayed, just tell them because if you were on the receiving end of that, I would care if I was on the receiving end. I'd want someone that was working for me to care as well. So I want my guys to care and I want them to be proud when they go home at night and proud when they come in the morning or whatever. But Pertex has been here a long time now. I mean, it'll be here a long time yet. And I hope to be a part of it for a long time yet. And I would support and help anybody that was coming into it as much as I possibly could. Um, but 
Yeah, it's been good to me.